crypto gang, welcome back to another episode. If you guys are new here, we do a giveaway at the beginning of every single episode. And today's winner is Shakespeare 210 Thanks so much for commenting on the previous video with your wallet address, Shakespeare. Just sent you some crypto. On this very special episode, I sit down with Hashoshi. You guys may have remembered him from previous interviews we've done on the channel. He is a very well-known developer in the community and just an overall nice guy. We sit down and talk about Ethereum 2.0, NFTs, and a lot of the things having to do with the Netscape moment. But before we dive into the interview, I wanted to just do a quick announcement that Grow Your Base 2.0 just launched on Product Hunt. If you're not familiar with Grow Your Base, it is effectively being called the Coinbase Earn of NFTs and tokenized assets. So you can go on there, complete assignments, learn about these different non-fungible tokens and tokenized assets, and earn them and develop a portfolio in doing so. So right now we're doing this exclusive giveaway on Grow Your Base to celebrate this 2.0, the second iteration that you guys have helped us develop over the past year. All the links will be in the description below so you guys can check out not only Hishoshi's YouTube channel and his Twitter, but also the Grow Your Base campaign where we're exclusively giving away some crypto kitties. Without further ado, let's jump into the interview with Forrest, aka Hishoshi. What's up, everybody? I am here with Forrest, aka Hashoshi. How's it going, Forrest? Pretty good, man. How are you? Going good. Going good. Thanks so much for coming on the show, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Super stoked. Yeah, if you guys are new to the channel, uh, we've actually done multiple episodes in the past, and it's been a lot of fun watching each other grow on YouTube, and totally. I really wanted to learn from Hashoshi himself about Ethereum 2.0. So I remember, I think we talked about sharding the last time. Yeah, I think, I think we so. touched on it. Yeah. And uh, God, it feels like a really long time ago. It feels like an eternity ago. <laughs> yeah. It's like a, a week in, uh, in crypto is like, feels like a, a year. But uh, in terms of, can you just describe to the audience what your opinion is on Ethereum 2.0 and what that means from a, from a broad sense. For sure. So Ethereum 2.0, first and foremost, is categorized by the move away from proof of work and towards proof of stake. So the security of the network is going to be dependent on your stake in the network in terms of your, your Ether stake. And there's a whole process behind that for how they're facilitating that proof of stake. It comes in so many forms. Uh, but the other part of it is that this whole entire blockchain network is going to start being broken up into different um, like smaller sharded blockchains or side chains. So there'll be one, uh, one main Ethereum blockchain that keeps track of the state of affairs called the beacon chain. So it's the main beacon of light for everybody. And then all of those smaller sharded side chains, if you will, are going to feed their own sets of transactions and, and stakes back to that, that beacon chain. And the whole idea here is that they want to make everything more efficient so they need to scale and everybody remembers when crypto kitties came out everyone was pumped and then ethereum you know started getting clogged because there was so <laughs> much data being you know transmitted across and every time piece of code runs on a smart contract and something is you know big pieces of data are transmitted everybody's got to do that same operation to make sure that it's it's valid so that causes some issues uh, yeah, too many kitties. Too many too kitties, many man. Kitties. <laughs> too many kitties. But, too uh, many kitties. But yeah, so Ethereum 2.0 is really all, it's all about scale. And, you know, people are like, oh, it's about making the network more secure. I don't even think it's about that. I think it's, you know, everything's like a balancing act. Like you can't, there isn't a blockchain out there today that is scalable, infinitely easy to use with a Turing complete scripting language for smart contracts, that's also infinitely scalable and you know, whatever, like it just, there isn't one. And so this is trying them trying to balance the, the economic part of consensus that helps secure the network and also keeping intact some of their smart contract functionalities and improving those. Um, so it's trying to bring the best of both worlds without sacrificing one big piece. And it's yeah. really tough to do. Yeah, I mean, it, Ethereum as it stands is like is mind bending to me because mm -hmm. it's accomplishing so many things that it's it's so meta 
that yeah. when you're when you're thinking about how you're you're programming incentives for people to participate in this network i just it, it when i first saw it and started kind of dabbling around in it and trying not to lose too much money or anything like that um, yeah. i really I, I saw massive potential i i didn't participate in the ico or anything like that yeah neither but, did i yeah that was um that was kind of a, a frenzy and, and chaos, but I, it was fun to watch, you know, mm -hmm. as a, as sideline. But I think that in terms of the amount of developers that are focused on the problems around Ethereum at this point, it's probably, I think it's over 200,000. I think it's over 200,000 developers at least. Uh, yeah. And that is, I mean, a staggering amount by all measures <laughs> that many developers yeah. focused on one, one project. Yeah. And, and people like I say, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, the show, she Ethereum developer. Like I'm not even like, I'm not a core developer for Ethereum. Like I hope no one thinks that I am because I'm totally not and I've never claimed to be. But for me, I like to build things with Ethereum and the difference between the first time that I started tinkering with Ethereum in 2015 and now in 2019 how much easier it is and how much better everything works it's astounding and that credit really goes to not only the core development team but all the other like amazing intelligent developers that have created tools to make life easier like the truffle team i credit them with a large proportion of ethereum success because it's allowed dapp developers to a have templates to work from all the like the whole time and and b giving them tools to abstract some of the more complicated parts of the process and make it faster like i i could not live without truffle period cool what what is truffle exactly it's like a template yeah so it's like a suite of tools and and templates built for ethereum but now they're they've spun out of consensus and they're now their own company with their own sort of mission. And they're now extending their tools to other platforms, oh. but they provide um, easy templates to work from for dApps. So they have like um, UI frameworks, basically like templates, like folder structures that you can use to build a dApp faster and use an example. Um, and then they also have tools to help you, um, deploy your contracts to a local test chain to help you deploy contracts into a production environment on a test net or a main net um, tools to help you test in your development process and like, just things to make it easier throughout the whole development process and deployment. That's awesome. I know um, there, have you heard of the company pocket They're uh, yeah. yeah, they're um, fantastic. I've met, their CEO, Michael, I had him on the channel mm -hmm. and um, they're very much trying to do not a suite of tools or anything, but they're trying to uh, allow people to deploy these dApps in a decentralized yeah. way that is once again, <laughs> so meta, like all this stuff is it's, you're dealing with something that's decentralized. And when you talk about something like Tron that yeah. is always boasting their, their transactions per second, that you're, you're trading centralization yeah. often for speed. For and sure. it's, it's such a, a mind bending problem to, to try and solve. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. It's, it's crazy. I mean, people get so mad, like so angry. I remember the first time I made a video about Ethereum 2.0. Everyone's like, Ethereum's dead because it's taking too long. Like that was <laughs> almost a year ago. And we're still here and people, that said that clearly have not have realized now that it isn't dead and they still have I'm not going to say an, an, an unlimited amount of time left, but until, until other projects start to, you know, work that balance of centralization versus decentralization scale throughput security, all that stuff until people start figuring that out, there's no rush whatsoever to put something yeah. out. And I say this all the time, but the difference here is that in a, even a large scale, like de deployment of new software in some of like the big leagues, right? Like when Facebook pushes a massive suite of new features, right? 
they can test all that in an isolated environment, which you can do with Ethereum and, and blockchains. You can run a test environment. But as in, in the difference is that in Ethereum or in these decentralized worlds, once you push something out as a protocol change, first of all, it's done in a fork. So you're not guaranteed that everyone on the blockchain is going to agree with what you've done and they're going to adopt it. And then even if they start adopting it, you can never predict what people, like random people are going to do that you didn't think about and, and write tests for and make sure you've put the guardrails up for people. And so I'd rather Ethereum do this deployment in test nets like 40 times and then try and push to mainnet so that they know how it's going to work out. Because they have one shot, like quite literally one shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it has been a wild ride following that. That's awesome that you got experience like early on playing around with it. And now you can see the progression of how these teams have, have contributed to it. Yeah, man, it's, it's crazy. Like I, and early on, and even now it depends on who you compare me to. Like back then I was a terrible developer in general, let alone without any documentation to work from. Like there was just nothing out there to teach you how to build a smart contract. And then you learn to build a smart contract and then you need to learn how to build it securely, which is a whole nother beast. So the DAO hack proved that. It's like you can create something that works, but at the instant someone figures out the big gaping hole in what you've built and you yeah. can't patch it, you know, you can't fix it, you know, what are you gonna do then? So it's gotta work perfectly the first time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which yeah. is not something you experience in other, you know, in other coding endeavors you know yeah it's uh it is a wild wild west type experience for all these developers for over two hundred thousand developers which is just wild to wild to think about in in terms of so one of the things that i love to talk about with other amazing content creators is that we see a lot of projects like a lot of projects come through mm -hmm. i'm sure your inbox is a nightmare yeah. and it's it's fun to actually you know talk to some of these people that show promise and they're developing their building and things like that. In terms of, I, I always talk about the Netscape moment where mm -hmm. there's, there's a Netscape came along and brought hundreds of millions of people into the internet. You didn't have to know anything about programming. Yep. There was just an interface, smooth, browse. easy to use. Yeah. You could browse for the first time. And that's the, the snap moment where it took off with the internet and you being so plugged in to the space and Ethereum, what do you think, is it going to be DeFi? What do you think is going to be the, the Netscape moment for Ethereum and Ethereum 2.0? I think that the Netscape moment for Ethereum and Ethereum 2.0 is most likely going to be not the most like attractive thing. Like I think everyone looks at, Ethereum 2.0's protocol change is like the Cadillac of the protocol and what's going to happen. I think what happens after that directly is going to change, change the game because it's going to be all of the tools and products, you know, inclusive of some of the startups that are already in the space. There are a lot of projects and people don't realize this, like, you know, wallets and, and apps and services that have been built that are being held back and, are not as valuable because of the protocol limitations. So once that happens and some of those protocol limitations are lifted, the stuff that's already built out there that's trying to make it easy for people to use the technology, it's all gonna start to, to click. And people are gonna be like, wow, I don't have to wait, you know, six, seven minutes to buy a non fungible token. I can go and I can watch a a football game and my ticket can be, you know, immortalized as a, as an NFT instead of having to have a physical, you know, physical ticket, whatever. Yeah. Those things that don't really work in real time now are going to start to work in real time. And I think that's the big difference. Yeah. The concepts are there. It's just the, the realization hasn't quite gotten there. Yeah. The speed in NFTs I think is, is definitely going to be something that, uh, brings millions and millions of people in pretty, pretty substantially. Cause a lot of people, they don't, the average person doesn't care about decentralization. They don't care about 
anything that operates in the background. They just want to swipe something, beep something, whatever it is, and have it work. Yeah. And speed is definitely going to be a factor. Yeah, for sure. It totally is. And that's, that's the funny thing. If you, there are so many startups out there that are like, oh, well, we need to make this feel futuristic and, and new. Like, no, you don't. Like, you actually don't want to do that because people are on their phones now and they don't care at all about how any of it works. They just, it just needs to work. That's mm -hmm. it. And the platforms and protocols that have done a good job of bringing, you know, external tooling and such that makes the process easier for developers to put out or put more attention to the user interface and user experience are the ones who are already kind of winning because, you know, that's the reason why Ethereum applications are even relevant at all because there are so many tools out there and, doc and so many docs out there to show you what to do so the developers can focus on the product part. Yeah. Yeah. Ethereum has a huge, 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 huge community compared to everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, at least people that are building. And I think that the builders are going to be the ones that really drive um, where things go. Uh, yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah, it's like a different, it's a different world out there. Like uh, people that compare Bitcoin to Ethereum just crack me up because they're not even close to the same. Yeah. Like they're not even in the same category. Like cri the cryptocurrency category is the last place that they have anything to do with each other. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, at least. Yep. Yep. No, that's, I, I've heard that a couple of times before and fully agree that they are very, very different. Um, one is literally using the economic incentives of cryptocurrency to apply networks yeah. on top of like cool applications. Yeah. Um, and the other is, is a, a cryptocurrency through and through. Yeah. Um, so in terms of, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about Ethereum 2.0 what uh, we we briefly touched on uh, NFTs and yeah. just to, to please please the audience for uh, sure. Um, what uh, can you tell us? I know I'm very familiar with ERC seven twenty ones, but a new uh, concept came out. It was was it eleven ERC eleven fifty five? I think is a new collectible eleven fifty five a new NFT style, and I actually think that that is going to be, I think it's just, it's more, it's more efficient. And I don't know the tech spec in depth enough, but I know that when 721 was sort of finalized, mm -hmm. there were a lot of, there were a lot of people in the community and even part of the team within Ethereum that knew that that was not the final solution per se uh, to the NFT issue. And we saw that with crypto kitties and crypto zombies also just had to move a lot of their you know, their economy over to the Loom network, their very own sort of layer two, because they mm -hmm. just couldn't get it to, to work properly on Ethereum. Um, yeah, NFTs are going to be huge. And I actually have a feeling that the standard is going to get, is going to evolve multiple times before we see a really, you know, ironed out long-term viable solution. Yeah. You know, because... Yeah. In Ethereum, essentially, whenever something is, whenever a, a function is executed within a contract, more or less everyone on the network, every node on the network that's validating has to perform that same function over again to verify that the result is the same and that that's, that transaction that resulted is valid. So you can imagine how costly and the reason why the gas cost in Ethereum in Ether is so high for NFTs because there's just more data and more going on. And like a crypto kitty is basically just this big alphanumeric scramble that then gets translated into an image to you on a user interface. And those alphanumeric characters are expensive to process on uh, on Ethereum, which is just a big shared computer. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it is going to be really cool to watch how it evolves mm -hmm. over the next few years, and just even with the progress that you've seen in terms of like how how difficult it was and the little amount of documentation that was taking place in 2015 on Ethereum and now where it is, I think that that's with you know so many developers focused on it, they're going to be rapidly 
developing uh, and progressing in NFTs for sure. Yeah. For sure. I mean, I experimented and, you know, I didn't build anything super custom. I just took the standard for 721, the, the standard contract and just implemented a couple of the functionalities to see. And if I had done that test on mainnet, it would have cost me a, a pretty penny to do it because just the basic implementation is a little pricey. So yeah, I mean, it's going to move in a, a different direction. I know the, like the Uport folks, the identity application folks within, uh, in the Ethereum ecosystem are looking more and more like an NFT oriented platform for credentialing than they were before. So I think there's a play within identity for the NFT standard where your credentials can be almost like crypto collectible items, you know, mm -hmm. that may or may not have expiries and your wallet as a collection of those is your, your identity, if you will. So there's a lot of potential. Yeah. Huge potential, huge potential. Cool, man. Well, this has been a great conversation. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Where course, do you want people to, uh, to come check you out? Right on. You can, uh, you can search Hishoshi on YouTube. That's H A S H O S H I. And I'm on Twitter as at Hashoshi four, the number four. So you can connect with me there. I'm, I respond to almost as every person that I possibly can. So if you ask me a question or say, what's up, I'll, I'll be there. Cool. Yeah, that is very true. You respond to literally everybody. <laughs> if I possibly I can, I respond to almost like to every person. Yeah. Try That's to. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, the link's going to be in the description below guys. Great. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks guys. That's it for my interview with Forrest, AKA Hashoshi. Overall, tremendously nice guy. I'm excited to talk about NFTs with him. We chat a lot on Telegram and various different groups and whatnot. It's great to sit down with brilliant developers like him that really understand the fundamentals of how something like Ethereum work. And it's great to learn from people like him. I'm excited for 2020. It's going to be a wild year full of different exciting conferences as well as one in February that has to do with NFTs. More on that coming soon. But that is it for this episode. I hope you guys like it. All the links will be in the description below so you guys can go show Hishoshi some love on YouTube. And that is it for this episode. I will see you guys on the next episode of Hack Crypto. Don't forget to hack your crypto education.